Hi, my name is Asira Kravat, and today I'm going to show you how you can do a simple magic money spell for your prosperity and wealth. Let's get right into it. So here's what you need. A green candle, the sigil of Clownack, a round paper cutout, a sensor with coal, a pencil and a black marker, some tools so you can carve your candle, a bowl, some gold leaf paint, money drawing oil, a mix of money drawing herbs, a lancet to draw some blood, the universal circle to draw in the powers, and your spell with the sigil, the chant needed, and the evocation. The first thing that you're going to do is take your candle, take out the wig. Now you can either do your own candles or you can buy them, but since this is a very easy money spell, a bought candle will do. Make sure that it's light green. Now you're going to take your bowl, that's only to catch the falling off charts of wax because we're going to carve the candle now. So the first thing that you're going to do is carve a little hole inside here. That should do. It doesn't really have to be that big because we're going to put some magical orbs inside later. Now, the next step, what you're going to do is to take the candle and carve in our full name onto it. Now, once you're done carving your name, you're going to take the magic seal and sigil of wealth and prosperity and also carve it onto the candle. Now, you can start by drawing it with a Sharpie marker on the candle, preferably. That's how I use it, so I can just carve the lines in. Or you can just do it by hand. Whatever you feel like, make it your own. Magic is a science and an art, so you are the creator and the artist. So always make sure that you follow my instructions, but also make it your own. Because you are the magician witch that is changing your reality. Now what I like to do is to draw the sigil first with a sharper and then carve it. Now this doesn't have to be perfect. Just let yourself be guided and focus on your intention. The intention is once again, prosperity, money and wealth to be drawn towards us. Now, once you're done carving your sigil, you can either leave it as it is, or you can paint over it with a specific color that is also in line with the powers and attributes of money, wealth, and prosperity. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a gold leaf paint and paint over it with a small brush. Once again, this is just optional. Everything that you do optional just adds to the power on top of the spell. Once you're done painting the sigil, you will go over to the next step. Now we have carved the sigil of wealth and prosperity onto the candle. What we're going to do now is to further meditate with it. Now focus yourself on the goal of the spell and then try to look at the sigil. Feel its power vibrating and emanating from it. See what it's going to give you. Simply start meditating with it. Focusing your breath and your intention towards the seal and the end goal. Feel the emotions that you're going to have 
once a spell will be successful. See yourself at the end of this timeline where the spell has manifested and your goal was achieved. Put all of this energy into the seal. Now we're going to take the seal of Clownick and our round paper cutout and we're going to redraw the sigil onto our cutout. Now you could use a sigil that you printed out, but what is most important about this is that you create it yourself. Because by drawing the sigil onto the paper, it will become your creation. And at the same time, by using a pencil or a marker or anything else that you can use, you're letting your energies flow into the paper and into the seal. Now, once again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You are the creator and you are the artist of your reality and of the seal and the spell. Just make sure that you go with the flow and let yourself be guided by the powers of the sigil that you're drawing. So here's how you can consecrate any type of sigil or gateway for spirit. There are a thousand ways how you can do this, but it's one of the most efficient and basic ways. So you're going to take your sigil, you're going to either place it in front of you. I oh, know, just took this crystal, has nothing to do with the energy of it, just to place my sigil and kind of lay it against it. Sort of look at it from this angle. And now we're going to gaze at the sigil. By gazing, I mean we're going to try to not directly look at the paper of the sigil, we're trying to look through it. Almost like there is a glass, you're not going to look directly at the glass, but what's behind it. So you can sort of train that with your eyes. So we're going to try to gaze at it. We're just going to look at the sigil and we're going to meditate with it. And what's going to happen after a time is that we're going to start to feel some emotions or we're going to feel some shifts in energies. Just try meditating with it while gazing at the sigil. Try to invoke the spirit within you, establishing a connection to Clownek. And what's going to happen after a while is that either the sigil is going to be visually disappearing, it sort of looks like it's disappearing and then reappearing on the paper, almost like it's hovering above it, or it's going to have a glow to it, like the lines are essentially glowing. And that means that the sigil is activated and that the gateway has been opened. Now you can train this, of course, and train your intuition to know when a spirit is there, um, but that takes time. But it's just essentially it's important that you know from yourself within that the spirit is there. Do not question it. While doing this in this method, it will most of the time appear and you'll be able to conjure and summon it. Now what you can do on top of this is that you're going to breathe energy into the sigil. So you're going to breathe in. And by breathing out, you're going to visually energize the lines of the sigil. So you're going to breathe in and then breathe out. And while you're breathing out, you're going to trace the sigil itself with energy. Now, once you have done this, you're going to give it more power. And then you can call forth Clown Egg. You can take a consecration oil that is specific for the spirit or a all-purpose consecration oil, and you can put that on the sigil. What you can also do is use the chant that was given in this video to also call forth Clown Egg or any type of spirit that you want through the sigil. Last thing to do is to, optional, give the spirit blood. No spirit really demands blood. Now there are some that will do, but this is a different topic. So you don't have to give them blood, but it also gives the energy and life to the sigil in the gateway. Once you're done meditating with it and you have opened up the seal, you're going to turn it around and you're going to write your petition onto the paper. What is most important about your petition is that you do not ask. You do not write, I want this or that to happen to me. 
with magic, you're going to manifest this petition and whatever you put your mind towards. So if your mind and your intention is to wanting, wanting something to manifest, that's exactly what's going to happen. You need to have it already. So by writing down your petition, you have prosperity, you have wealth. And once you write it down, feel the emotion that this will bring and put it into the words. Now, once you've done writing the petition on the back of the seal, you're going to place it on your altar or any kind of table. This is very optional. I'm just taking this to add to the power and we're going to later consecrate this as well. But any kind of surface will do. Just make sure that you cleanse it beforehand if it's not a working altar for you. Cleanse off the energies and then just simply do the spell on top. As we're going to open up the sigil, we're going to use the chant Avalen Esen Klaunek Kiar, which is his demonic N. Afterwards, we're going to repeat this chant after another, one after another. And then we're going to state the chant that I have written for the spell. King Klaunek. I call and conjure you forth to come for your seal and gateway. I summon you to manifest before, around and within me. Klaunek, I give you license to appear. I give you power to manifest. I give you this call to come. Rise, Klaunek, rise. Rise from your dwelling and come forth. I open up the gateway into your essence and soul and call you forth through this link. Move through the funnel and be guided by my voice into my reality and physical plane. Come here now in this moment of creation so that you may aid me in my quest. Clownic is now here with us. So what we're going to do now is just we're going to place the seal to the side. We're going to take the coal, then we're going to take our magical herb mix, which is for prosperity, wealth and money. There are herbs that I would suggest you not to burn, but in this case you can put them on the coals and onto your candle as well. So here's how you can consecrate pretty much anything with my specific chant. For the spell that we're doing, we're going to need some herbs. Now you can either already buy herbs pre-consecrated by botanicas, witch stores, uh, and so forth. But it's always best that you consecrate them yourself. So if you don't know how to do this, let's get down to the basics. So first of all, we're going to need some herbs. So I have uh, copa resin with me, what's also used within the uh, herb mix for prosperity and wealth, just to amp up the power as a general power source. And we have some bay leaves, which have the properties of wealth, prosperity, and essentially are always connected to money. <laughs> Now, herbs, mixtures, are best used if you can grow them yourself, but let's be realistic. Most of us don't really have the time to, you know, have our own garden or even either have the space for something like that. So, dried herbs will do as well. Now, when it comes to bay leaves, they are best used as a whole, but you can definitely also cut them up since we're doing an herb mix. I used to just cut them up after I've consecrated them and then just mix them together. Now we're going to take our herbs and you can do this with any type of herb that you can get your hands on. And not just herbs, you can pretty much consecrate anything. You can even consecrate a fucking balloon. So we're going to take the bay leaves and then we're going to use the chant that I've given you either down in the description or I will blend it in here now so you can take a screenshot and click on pause. And then we're just going to basically take the herb in our hands or hold our hands above it depending if it's a loose herb or if it's a something like bay leaf. We're going to use it in our right hand because the right hand gives. Preferably, you hold it somewhere over your altar or sacred space. Um, later on, I can tell you more about consecration, what we can do. But now let's start with the chant. So you're going to envision the energies of what this herb is going to do for you. So the bay leaf is here to assist us with prosperity and wealth. So that's what we're going to envision. We're also going to envision the light that is associated with that type of power flowing into the herb because we're going to give it that power. While at the same time as the energy is flowing through you into the herb, 
also see that the atoms and the cells, try to visualize it, if you can just try to see the herb itself starting to glow from within. So you're going to give it your power, but that also activates the herb. So try to visualize that and let your energy flow into it. And then you're going to repeat after me. Spirit of the bay leaf, I awaken the powers of darkness and light which dwell within you and consecrate you by the powers of magic. Serve me to empower my great work, creature of the bay leaf, as I funnel and activate your properties of wealth, abundance and prosperity within your cells and atoms. I evoke your spirit and bring life into your vessel. Awaken and empower my magic. You are now consecrated. So it is done and so mote it be. And there you go. It is consecrated. Now there's a thousand ways on how you can consecrate an herb or any type of item. This was a very basic one. You can essentially do anything with magic because you know it's your craft. So you could also go like really heavy into it and you could create a whole circle of salt for example and you're going to first cleanse the energies of that said uh, herb. You can place it around certain candles with numerology depending on you know whatever you're trying to bring forth in that herb with specific colors attributed to that herb and you could even call for spirits first evoke them invoke them into the bay leaf and all the great stuff but one of the most easiest and basic ways are sometimes the most powerful so this is going to do now the same thing goes for loose herbs so the best thing you could do is just essentially have a mortar with this we're just going to have some copa resin i'm going to do the same essentially you know you can either start doing it before you crush it or you can start crushing you know the herbs or this this case the resin and then you can hold your hand above it the most important thing is that you have a clear intent of what you want to do and yet you bring in the energy so you're going to sprinkle the herb mix onto your table and also onto the coals Just a little bit for now, you can use any amount that feels right for you. Then you're going to let the herbs burn. And the next step will be to take your magic money drawing oil. Once again, I have made this myself. You can either get all of these ingredients at a local botanica. Of course, you can go online. There are multiple stores that offer money drawing oil and all the ingredients and essential things that you need for this type of spell. But it's always best to create your own, essentially, because you can put your energy into it. So we're going to use my money drawing oil and we're going to anoint the candle with that. So we're just going to take our fingers and we're going to rub along the candle. When you're anointing your candle with the oil, make sure that you're doing it in an upwards motion from the bottom to the top always going up because we want the energies of clown egg to move into the candle flame so that it can manifest upwards is drawing it up and downwards is drawing it in but in this case since we're working with clown egg we're going to draw them once your candle is anointed, you're going to simply take the herbs and sprinkle them on top. You can either roll it or just sprinkle it and make sure to massage it in. Now, once you're finished with the candle, you're going to take the seal once again. You're going to use the same oil and anoint the sigil with it. Once you have anointed the sigil, you're going to take your lancet and you're going to offer clown egg some of your blood. While we're doing this, we are focusing on the chant and continue to call forth clown egg through its seal. So far, we're doing great. So what we have done, we have given clown egg an offering of rum, 
which is currently burning. We have anointed the candle with the money drawing oil and the herbs. We have also anointed the sigil with the money drawing oil. Some of the herbs will also be on there. Then we also anointed the sigil and gave an offering of our blood to Klaunek, which is the greatest offering you can give to any type of spirit. Now this is optional, but I do recommend it just to amp up the power behind it and to show your dedication towards the working. Now we're going to take the magical herb mix, we're going to sprinkle it on top of the sigil. And then we will place the candle on top of it. The most important sacrifice here is the offering of our dedication and of our energy. The dedication aspect comes from actually giving up something that comes from you by sacrificing your blood to the spirit and to the magic that you're producing. Now a prick of the finger will be enough to give an offering to that spirit. The dedication part is also important because once the spell is working its magic, you also have to make sure that you're working your magic, which means that you have to do the mundane action so that this spell can manifest through the avenues that you have created. Because otherwise, nothing will really manifest. If you sit at home and you're not doing anything actively to engage and work with the spell, your results may not come to fruition. So, as we have consecrated the seal, the sigil, the candle, we will now take our spell and we're going to gaze at the flame. We're going to visualize the future of where the end result has already manifested. Now while we're doing this, we're going to use our own energy. So start by rubbing your hands and your fingertips together, just your fingertips, slightly brush them. This is, uh, this is going to give you a sense of how your energy can flow if you're not familiar with energy work. And then try to pull your hands back and forth from each other. You're going, to, you're going to feel a magnetic pull. This is your energy. Essentially focus on that. Then what you're going to do is you're going to pull energy, golden energy of financial prosperity from your left hand and you're going to direct it into the candle flame and around the candle itself. While you're doing this, once again, gaze at the candle flame and let the energies rise within the candle, going up in a spiral and ending in the flame, merging with the entire vessel. See the future in front of you and in the candle flame. I recommend doing this until you know that the candle and the flame and the spirit itself has received all the energy that it needs. Now use the chant that I gave you and start looking at the sigil that we carved onto the candle. Once again see it with your third eye, see the lines glowing as they were energized by us. The spell itself working as a synergy of all different elements working together. While we're chanting, envision an energy link that is going from your third eye into the seal. And state the following chant. Ha agal dinasta de duna. Ha agal dinasta de duna. Ha agal dinasta de duna. Ultiva tenebres dinusin, ultiva tenebres dinusin, ultiva tenebres dinusin. By all the powers of magic, as above so below, my will is done, and so mote it be. And the spell is done. We have carved our full name onto the candle. We have carved the sigil onto the candle. We have painted over the sigil with gold leaf paint. We have consecrated it by moving the energy into the candle and funneling it inside while doing the process 
of etching the sigil on top. We have consecrated it and anointed it with the magical money drawing oil, with the herbs. We have called forth Klaunek. We have opened up his seal and his gateway through his sigil. We have anointed his sigil with our own blood. We have written our petition behind the seal and we have talked and communicated with the spirit, internally knowing that the spell and the petition has been accepted. Everything is now working together in synergy. The sigil itself is the gateway for the spirit to move through. The blood and the oil on the sigil was given as an offering, as an empowerment for the entire spell. The energy spiraling upwards from the gateway into the candle from the seal itself is emanating the power of wealth and prosperity, again further amplifying the power behind it. And we have now also lit the candle so that the gateway of the flame may open up the portals for the spell to come into your life. We have connected ourselves to this candle and we have become the candle itself, as the candle is now an internal part for us. It is a symbolic representation and we are linked to it. Always make sure that you contact the spirit first before you do any spell. Get to know the spirit and then start working with it and you will have massive success. Now you can either leave the spell where you've just done it. What I would prefer you to do, however, is to place it somewhere where you have a sacred place where no one will disturb it so that the energies can accumulate. I'm going to place this on one of my other altars and just let the candle burn through. What is also very important for you to do now is to completely forget about the spell. Now, this might sound weird because, I mean, we just called forth Clownek and we've done all this magical working to bring forth prosperity and wealth into your life. But what you have to know is that once you have casted a spell, you can no longer be attached to it because this now is a living thing. Your consciousness has been copied. The consciousness of that spirit is in that candle. You are attached to that candle magically. So while you're thinking about the spell, wondering when it's going to manifest, you're going to take power away from the spell and you're not letting it rest. This energy and this spell is now a reality for itself. This reality needs to find a way through an avenue or a soil or template where it can grow into your life. So thank the spirit for coming let it rest and make sure that you do the mundane work on your side as well. Because if you focus on the spell too much, you will have a hard time manifesting. Let it go and the energy will flow. I hope this video was helpful to you on how to create a magic money spell. Once again, I thank you for watching until the end of this video. If you'd like to see videos about witchcraft magic, what it is, tutorials like this showing you how it's done, the history behind it, awesome podcasts, and everything that has to do with your cult magic and witchcraft. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and wait for more awesome content that's coming your way pretty soon. My name is Asira Krabat. Nothing is true, and everything is permitted. I'm out. <laughs>